It's Wednesday night, and we're studying the history of Israel. And the reason we're studying the history of Israel is that is everything that the Bible is about. People want to know about, when you're going to talk about prophecy or revelation, that's about the history of Israel. Everything is about history of Israel. Israel's history points to the time that they were a nation under kings. And that was from 1 Samuel to Second Chronicles. And this is the time period in which they had kings, men who were kings over them. And the first king was Saul. Saul, and this is the kings right here. This is a chart of them from Saul all the way down to the last king, Zedekiah. Of course, the kingdom was split into two nations because of Solomon's apostasy. There in the 11th chapter of 1 Kings, he allowed his wives to go after all these sun and tree goddesses of all the people around him and of all the nations. And the main reason is because he married 700 wives, strange women or foreign women, who worship sun and tree goddesses. And he had 300 concubines, and they were the same. And he allowed these wives to keep their sun and tree worship. But the man that really turned everything pagan, Solomon in his old age repented evidently because he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes and said it was all vanity and vexation of spirit. And the Bible says that these evil women turned his head around. And then... Uh, and then while they were a nation, God tells them under the law of Moses, Moses leads them out of 400 years in Egypt. They're 400 years in Egypt, they're 40 years in the wilderness, and they're about 300 years under judges. This is, this is just approximately how everything goes. And then before 400 years in Egypt, you have the time of the patriarchs. Now this is where we are right now, patriarchs. Patriarch comes from pater. Pater is a Latin word meaning father. Father. And R-K, A-R-C-H-E. R-K means head. R can mean captain. R can mean beginning. Beginning father. Head father. We, ha we say ark. Angel. Head angels. Uh, Angel being the word angelos, A-G-G-E-L-O-S. It means head or captain of the angels. And we have several archangels. An angel is a messenger. That's what he was. So you have Jesus called an archangel. You have Michael called an archangel. And you have it called Gabriel. Gabriel is called an archangel. Of course, Jesus was God in the flesh. And he was an archangel in the sense that he was bringing the message there to Joshua and Joshua, the fifth chapter, when Joshua was fighting battles and Jesus appeared to him before he was called Jesus, when he was actually uh, the ancient of days, when he was the word, he appeared to Joseph, he appeared to Moses, he appeared to Abraham. So we're talking about this time period that Israel was the kingdom. Right now we're back here in the age of the patriarchs and we're starting, we start in Genesis, the first chapter, and we've moved our way up to Abraham. Abraham. Now Abraham was born somewhere in the neighborhood of 2100, 2164 to 66 B.C. That's an approximate date. Now we're going to show that in this study, we're going to show that when you start in Genesis and you go all the way down here to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that in the Old Testament, that from Genesis all the way down here to Joseph going into Egypt, going into Egypt, being sold into Egypt, Joseph being sold into Egypt, that the book of Genesis takes up around 2,600 years and then when you get into Exodus you get into Exodus as Moses leads the children of Israel out of Egypt the 400 years you can either classify that with Genesis or you can classify it with Exodus either way you want to because it is 400 silent years you got two sets of 400 silent years where's the other set 
between the Testaments, between the Old and New, between Testaments. Now, we don't have any noise going on over here. None. Zero. Zip. But over here, we do at least know that you, we've got some history, history during this time period from, we know that around 444 B.C., we know that that's when Nehemiah received the, the commandment to, or decree to rebuild Jerusalem. And we know that he was over there in Jerusalem 12 years. 12 years. So that leaves four and 32 years. So about 32 years after he finishes Jerusalem, we go into that silent period for 400 years till you get to Matthew. In fact, I believe that Nehemiah should be one of the last books of the Old Testament instead of Malachi because you immediately go into the silent years after he rebuilds Jerusalem. But what we're talking about, and I'm going to lay out Genesis so you can see how this is, and we'll try to get a closer, I'll get you a little bit closer to, than just the 2,600 years, but it's going to be something in that neighborhood. And the rest of the Old Testament when you get into Exodus, Genesis is going to take up all this. I'll go ahead and classify the 400 years with Genesis. So therefore, when you get into, uh, you get into Exodus, and then the fact, that, the fact that Joseph may have lived about 30 years longer than, his, than after his father died, in, his father Jacob died in Egypt, that leaves you in the neighborhood of 1,800 years, 1,800 years approximately from Exodus, the first chapter. Well, not ex these things cross over. Not just Exodus, the first chapter, but it's in the first chapter of Exodus, Genesis, Exodus. The law is... The law is the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers... Deuteronomy. That's called Torah to the Jews. Torah. And it's called Pentateuch. P-E-N-T-A-T-E-U-C-H. We call it Pentateuch because Pent means five. It means the first five books of the Bible. When the Jews would refer to the law, this is what they were talking about. The law and the prophets. Now, we're t I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to lay out Genesis so you can understand it. Genesis is about 2,600 years from Exodus, the second chapter, when Moses is born. In the first chapter of Exodus, that's where a new Pharaoh rises up that doesn't know Joseph. And so he sees that the, the Israelites are beginning to multiply in Egypt at such a breakneck speed and a rate that's just phenomenal. And he said, we have to kill off all the male children. And this happens in the first chapter of Exodus. So he gives instruction for all the midwives to kill the male children as they come out of the womb. Of course, the midwives are Jewish women, and why are they going to kill their own people? They're not. So they come up and they say to Pharaoh's representatives, they say, well, these are lively women. They're real healthy. They have the babies before we can get there. And they make that excuse. Well, then Pharaoh will start, he accelerates his program and goes around and starts killing the children himself, and then, of course, uh, Moses' sister puts Moses into the flags, or in what we call flags, into the bulrushes, and uh, puts him in a basket, and he floats down the river, and Pharaoh's daughter takes him out. Well, that happens in the second chapter. In the second chapter, Moses is not only born in the second chapter, but he goes to meet God immediately thereafter, up on the mountain there in the third chapter. So they move real fast. It doesn't tell you everything that's going on. The point I want you to see, all of Genesis takes up 2,600 years from Exodus, the second chapter, to, to, to Matthew is 1,800 or less. It's approximately 1,800. So all the rest of the Bible is 1,800 years while there's 2,600 right here. But you have to remember, Abraham was, was born in the 11th chapter of Genesis, and if he's born 2166 B.C., 
then from Genesis, the first chapter, until the 11th chapter is about 1,900 years. So a lot of this seems out of proportion. There's a lot of things happening that's not told us, but like Gleason Archer says, God's not going to tell us everything in the Bible. He's going to give us the amount that we need to understand it. Now, we're talking about why God scattered Israel, or why God points to Israel, and what happened to them at the end of their time as a kingdom. You notice the northern kingdom ceases in 722 B.C. under King Hoshea. Well, that's because northern Israel brings in Bel in the Grove through Jehu, the, uh, and he marries Jezebel, and Jezebel's father is Ethbaal, and he's a priest of the Ashtaroth and a priest of Baal, and he is here in Tyre and Sidon. That's what we call Lebanon, directly above Israel. He's in Tyre and Sidon, and they bring his gods down here. So it was northern Israel that brings about the, the imminent destruction, finally, of Israel because they bring in Baal in the grove through Ahab and Jezebel. Well, they keep on becoming wicked and evil till. Hoshea and God sends the Assyrians to carry northern Israel away in 722 and then the surviving kingdom after they're carried away is southern Judah. This is all, this is all Judah here or southern Israel. And the last king uh, of Israel is Zedekiah and he is carried away into captivity in 586 by the Babylonians who in the meantime have overthrown northern, who have overthrown the Assyrians that carried away northern Israel. Now, I want to try to lay out how these things are happening up here. And the reason we're studying this is because all the time Israel is a kingdom, they keep going after Baal, Grove, Grove, Shemosh, Molech, all the Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is the generic name for, for the tree deities or the female deities, female. All the sun deities were Baal and Hercules and and Adonis, and throughout the world they had a different generic name depending on the nation they were in. Well, God said he would scatter them. He gave the law to Moses. He said, I'll send four judgments, the sword, the famine, the pestilence, and the beast. If they, don't, if they continue to go after other gods, and of course, that's when southern Judah was carried away, northern Israel was carried away, and they've been in captivity for 2,600 years, and according to the 37th chapter, of Ezekiel, God said, I will, this is the valley of dry bones, dry bones, and God says, this is the whole house of Israel, these dry bones, and God says, I'll put meat on them, but before I put breath in them, which is spirit, he said, I'll build them into, a, into an entire army, and there'll be one nation, and there'll no longer be two, and he says, take one stick for Joseph, and Joseph is the 11th son of Jacob, he said the stick of Ephraim. And Joseph received the inheritance of Israel through his second born son Ephraim there in the 48th chapter of Genesis, Genesis 48. And, and Manasseh was his firstborn, and he received the lesser blessing. Ephraim the second born received the blessing. So it says take one stick for Joseph, one stick for Judah, which is southern Israel. When you see when you see Joseph mentioned long after his death, it's talking about the northern kingdom. You see Ephraim mentioned long after his death, it's talking about the northern kingdom. Or you see Samaria, you see Samaria in the Old Testament, that's talking about the northern kingdom. And, and then Judah is the southern kingdom of Israel. At the end of time, Judah and Joseph will be one, or Judah and Ephraim. The ten northern tribes will be Ephraim. The two southern tribes will be Judah and there'll be one nation at the end of time, and that's what they are now, and God scattered them because of what they did. But God took Abraham and pointed to the nation and said, I'm going to give the land to Abraham. Now, what we're trying to do is line up this covenant that God did over here, and we're...